Okay, so today's topic is a big one. It's the quadratic formula. And you will see the quadratic formula repeatedly in your study of mathematics. So in reading Kirk's note page at the top of the page, and this you don't have to copy down. I'll talk about that in just a second because we already talked about completing the square. It says our final topic in this unit looks at one of the most famous formulas in mathematics, the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula stems directly from the method of completing the square, which is what your last lesson was on. Its proof or derivation is beyond the scope of this course, so we're not going to prove it. First, though, we begin with the completing the square problem. So I don't want us to go through and solve this problem. I want to save some time in the note page, and I just want to review the process of completing the square which is also known as the box method. So the first thing we wanted to do was move the three to the other side of the equation. And that's why on this side it's negative, where on the left side it's positive, because you move it from the left side of the equal sign to the right side, or just move it from one side to the other. It's going to have the opposite sign. Now we're left uh, with the box method. And to fill the box, remember it's half of this number squared, so half of 8 is 4, and then 4 squared is 16. So fill in the boxes, factor this side. Now what I didn't write out is the factors of that. I just wrote what two they were. So this means x plus 4 times x plus 4, because 4 plus 4 is 8, and 4 times 4 is 16. And then negative 3 plus 16 is 13. So then we take the square root of both sides. So this is the format we want, and we started with solving quadratics by inverse operations. That is the step that we saw towards the beginning of the unit. So we take the square root to get rid of the exponent of 2 or the square. We cannot take the square root of 13, nor can we simplify it. 13 is prime, and its only factors are 1 and 13. So we're going to leave it as radical 13 and then subtract the 4, and remember, I like to slide the 4 right up in front of the plus or minus, and you'll see why. So now the formula. So the quadratic formula uh, for a quadratic equation in standard form. So it must be equal to 0. That's important. Remember, the a is the number before the x squared, the b is the number before the x, and the c is the last number. And if there is no last number, then c is 0. So our quadratic formula is this, and this is provided to you on the New York State Regents. And I know you're not taking the Regents exam, but you don't have to have it memorized. And be sure to check out the link of the video that I have included to help you memorize that formula that um, I had shown some of my students a few years ago when they did have to memorize it. Okay, so let's do exercise two. For the previous quadratic equations, the one we did above, or the one I had done for you, okay? We're going to solve it now using the quadratic formula. So first, let's identify the a, the b, and the c. So here, just wants to know, what is the a, the b, and the c values? Because the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's the little song that you'll see in the video attached. So a is the number in front of the x squared. So here's x squared, and I don't see a number there. So remember, it's going to be a 1. So a is 1. They go in order. The next number we see is an 8, and the last number is a 3. So let's plug it in. And have your calculators handy, too. Okay? So it's going to be x equals negative b, and b is 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now that 4ac, since there's no symbols in between the letters and the numbers, that means product or multiplication. So it's 4 times a times c. So 4 times 1 times 3 all over 2a, and that's 2 times a, so it'd be 2 times 1. So I'm going to write it over here, I'm going to draw my long line, and we have negative 8, there's no math there, plus or minus. Let's write the radical, 
And I want you to type the next part all underneath your calculator. So 8 squared minus 4 parenthesis 1 parenthesis 3, as the parentheses represent multiplication. So this is the square root of 52, and then 2 times 1 is 2. Okay? So remember in the fraction, with this plus or minus, um, we need to divide both the negative 8 by 2, so that would be negative 4, and we need to divide this by 2. Well, because that number is underneath the radical and this is not, I cannot divide just yet. So let's simplify. So plus or minus the square root of 52. So that might be simple for you at this point. It might not be. We need to, if you need to take a minute, write down the factors of 52. I'm going to do that off to the side. So we have 1 times 52, obviously 2 times 26 is, so you can just guess and check, is 52 divisible by 3? No. 52 divisible by 4? Yes. So 4 times 13, it's not a multiple of 5, can you divide it by 6? But we're not really, I don't really care about 6 as well. Well, I guess I do, but it needs to be a perfect square factor. So right now I see the perfect square factor of 4. I'm just going to take them in and try maybe the next one. So 9 is a perfect square, no. 4 times 4 is 16, no, and then of course 25, which is not going to work. So 4 is our largest number. So this actually becomes, um, I'm going to squeeze it up here, radical 4, radical 13. I wrote 4 times 3. Oh, no, I didn't have the 13. You just can't see the 1 because it's covered up by the circle. So radical 4, radical 13. So this is... 2 radical 13 simplified. So when I divide the 2 radical 13 by 2, the 2's cancel out and we're just left with radical 13, which is what, I'm going to move it down so you can see what we got up here. So this just reiterates that no matter which method you use to solve an equation, you will always get the same answer. So completing the squares one method and quadratic formula is another method for solving a quadratic or degree two. So let's go down to um, part B. Find the solutions using the quadratic formula. So let's know A, so A is a two, B is a negative nine, and C is four. So quadratic formula is X, equals, and then you can draw your long line for the radical, or the fraction. So negative b, we're going to have negative of negative 9. So that's going to turn that into a positive 9. Two negatives turn into positive. So 9 plus or minus, and I apologize, there's not much room. That's why I like to use my sheet sometime. Uh, the square root of negative 9 squared minus 4, so b squared minus a is a 2, c is a 4. So there's the b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So draw our long line, so it's going to be 9 plus or minus, and remember for the radical, I want you to go to the calculator. All right. So let's put this under. Remember, negative squaring you have to put in parentheses. So negative 9 squared minus 4 times 2 times 4. We get 49, which is friendly, our perfect square. Yay! And then 2 times 2, 4. So this is pretty cool. When you have a perfect square underneath the radical, your answer is not going to be in radical form. So I'm going to write it down here. So I'm going to move this here. So one of our answers is 9 plus the square root of 49. Well, the square root of 49 is 7. So 9 plus 7 over 4. And the other answer is 9 minus 7 over 4. Remember, there's always two answers form of that plus or minus, but when it's a radical, we don't bother writing it out because I can't add the, the radical with the non-radical term. So 9 plus 7, 16 divided by 4. So we get x equals 4 is one solution. And 9 minus 7 is 2. 2 divided by 4 
is one half. Now you can write the decimal or just leave it one half. Okay, now to the back. All right, so I'm going to modify this one a bit, okay? Let's actually, so I don't know how this is going to come out, but let's uh, get rid of that nine. So there's actually no C term here, okay? So we'll have A is one, B is six, and C is zero. Okay, so there's no C written, so that means it must be a zero. So let's do our X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC. So plugging in the numbers as I sang the little tune, all over 2A. All right, so we have X equals negative 6 plus or minus the radical. So it's going to be 6 squared, oops, 6 squared minus 4, parenthesis 1, parenthesis 0, and we get 36. So the square root of 36 all over 2. And 36 is friendly. So yay, another perfect square. So one answer is going to be negative 6 plus 6 over 2, because the square root of 36 is 6. And then the other answer is negative 6 minus 6 over 2. So again, one answer is with the plus minus. Now I could divide first, right? Because uh, 6 is divisible by 2 and negative 6 is divisible by 2. But I'm going to combine first, then divide. So negative 6 plus 6 is 0 over 2. So 0 divided by 2 is 0. And then we get negative 12 divided by 2. x equals negative 6. And there you have it. All right, last question, because I want to cancel or cross out B. I want to take a look at the word problem, OK? So it says, a projectile is fired vertically from the top of a 60-foot tall building. Its height and feet above the ground after t seconds is given by the formula. So t seconds, so the number of seconds is along the x-axis of this projectile. And we're going to know its height over time. Okay, so using your calculator, sketch a graph of the projectile's height h using the indicated window. So let's go to the calculator and type it in under y equals. So it's negative 16. t, remember, is your x. Negative 16 x squared plus 20 x plus 60. Now it wants us to use the window, so our x-axis only goes to 3. So we go to window, and x max is a 3, and we want 70 as our max height. So our y max is 70, graph. Uh, my window has something wrong. I want to go from 0 to 70, 0 to 3. So change it to 0, because we can't have negative time and we can't have negative height. Now that looks better. So let's copy down what we see. I'm actually going to trace it because to be accurate, I want to hit trace. I want to know what the maximum height is. So I'm scrolling along the curve and you can see my y values. They're just over 66. Yep. So, and that's at about its highest point, x is not even 1. Okay, so let's try to draw that to scale. x is not even 1, it's just over 66. So, let's see if we can hit that peak. Actually, I'm going to draw the peak just to the left of the 1. So, I'm going to draw that curve. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then let's also see where it hits the ground. So I'm scrolling to see where this projectile hits. And that's at an x value of 2.6, so just before the 3. So I'm going to try to, should have done this in pencil. There, not bad. All right. The question says, at what time, so what time 
does the ball hit the ground? So that's right here. And we can kind of see that on the calculator, but it wants it to the nearest tenth, and we need to be exact, okay? So when the ball has hits the ground, its height is zero. So we're going to put a zero in for h. So zero equals negative 16. And if you want to change it to x, you can. So probably many of you will. All right. So we're going to solve for x, and I want to know when it hits the ground. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula as it specifies. So a is negative 16, b is 20, and c is 60. And because it's the nearest tenth, this is going to be super short and easy because we can do it on the calculator. So it's going to be x equals negative b, and b is 20, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Now we just go to the calculator. Okay, so you can write out your x equals x equals. And we're going to use the fraction, so let's get out of the graph, use the fraction key. You're going to copy down this whole thing, okay, once with the plus sign and then the second time with the minus. So it's going to be negative 20 plus the square root of 20 squared minus 4 parenthesis negative 16 parenthesis 60 all over 2 parenthesis negative 16. All right, so one answer is negative 1.4098525575. Now, what's great about the calculator is you can go up and grab this whole thing, bring it down, and then go up in there to edit, and let's change that plus sign to a minus sign. So quick and easy. And we get 2.6598525575. All right, so we have two answers, and this is where our ball hits, which would be this one. So what the heck is this one? Well, this one is if the other, if it did actually, right, go down and hit right there. There's the negative. We don't want the negative answer because it doesn't make sense in this problem. But remember, every quadratic equation has two solutions. So finish by rounding. Um, to the right of the 6, because the 10's place is the first place, is a 5. So our answer is going to be 2.7 seconds. When you have a unit, you should include it. And that's the quadratic formula. And remember, check out the link or the attachments I'm going to put in this thread so you can see some of those videos to help you memorize the formula. Take care.